Hi everyone, Bernard here on behalf of MovieGameNostalgia.com with our regular look at what's out to buy, movies and box set TV seasons etc. We've got three of each today, we've got three movies, a couple of, well, one really big one and a couple of others, um, and three box sets as well for you to buy, so please push the old uh, sub subscribe button if, you, if you're if you not already subscribed and uh, push the bell notification so you know all these reviews and specials are coming out and information, vlogs, etc. Uh, and obviously, give us a, if you can give us a thumbs up, that was absolutely fantastic. It's always nice to see. Right, let's get on with what's coming out to buy. Right, the, the three movies. The first one, well, we've got It, Chapter 2, so that's probably the biggie of the week. It. We all remember the old It's uh, Stephen King. Yeah, 15 rating. It's £10 on DVD, £15 on Blu-ray and £25 on 4K. So it probably be a similar sort of price in dollars if you're, if you're outside of the UK, etc. Two hours and 49 minutes. It's obviously a horror fantasy drama. And it, it looks at um, the synopsis of this uh, this latest film. Defeated by members of the Losers Club, the evil clown Pennywise returns 27 years later to terrorise the town of Derry, Maine once again. Now adults, the childhood friends have long since gone their separate ways, but when people start disappearing, Mike Hanlon calls the others home for one final stand. Damaged by scars from the past, the United Losers Club must conquer their deepest fears to destroy the shape-shifting Pennywise. Now more powerful than ever, of course he is. Directed by Andy Muschietti, write, written, of course, by Stephen King, based on his novel It, and obviously his sc screenplay was done by uh, Gary Doberman. Uh, stars Jessica Chastain, James McAvoy, Bill Hader, plus many more. Any good? Well, obviously we've done a... We've had this at the cinema. A lot of people have seen this now. Critics-wise, it didn't rate very highly. 5.8 out of 10. Um, with IndieWire's Kate Erblin, she only rated it 5.8 5 out of 10 and commented, it's a whole lot less scary or fun the second time around. Uh, that was a sort of, yeah, that was more or less copied by a lot of the critics. User rating, a little bit higher. So Joe Public, you and me, 6.7 out of 10 on the Internet Movie Database. So it's not too bad a score. Uh, Carl Al Cycle or Hi Al oh, I don't know how you pronounce that. My apologies, Carl. On the 6th of January 2020, rated it 7 out of 10 and said, This movie never grabbed me, and it pains me to rate this movie a 7 out of 10. I love horror films. I enjoy Stephen King's content. I like Jessica Chastain, but this movie dragged on with almost no compelling storylines and hardly any scares. I loved the first remake, but this one was a swing and a miss for me. I think they were lost. They lost me in this movie. It was the lack of any meaningful character development, and I did enjoy the mottled sixty minutes when all the characters went their separate ways. The ending was decent, but still left me wanting something with it, with more nuance. Sorry, you got to see. It rated it six out of ten. My apologies, not seven out of ten. Um, so I mean, six out of ten is a watchable rating, isn't it? That's what I give it. I mean, I. I echo those reviewers' sentiment. I, I quite enjoyed the first half of it, but I, it sort of run out of steam for me. And it certainly wasn't as good or as scary as the original and uh, what I hoped it would be. I, I personally I personally give it a 6.5 out of 10. So, again, I'm not far behind the users on a, on a 6.7. I'm, I'm a bit kinder than the critics. I think the critics have been harsh, but it was an opportunity missed it, Chapter 2, I'm afraid. But um, if you liked it, that's out now to buy on DVD, Blu-ray and 4K. And on to the next one, which is a sort of a biggie, but obviously has got got missed in, uh, with the, it was released a similar time to it, Chapter 2 at the cinemas. And it was the new Rambo, the last Rambo, Last Blood, an 18 certificate. It's £10 on DVD, 15 on Blu-ray and £20 on 4K. It's now in 29 minutes, so short and, short and sweet, is it? Well, action-adventure thriller. And the synopsis of this, almost four decades after they drew first blood, Sylvester Stallone is back as one of the greatest action heroes of all time. I mean, he's getting a bit long in the tooth now, isn't he? John Rambo. Now Rambo must confront his past and unearth his ruthless combat skills to exact revenge in the final mission. A deadly journey of vengeance. Rambo Last Blood marks the last chapter of the legendary series, unless, unless he's offered a few more quid, I suppose. Directed by Adrian Grunberg. And stars Sylvester Stallone, Paz Vega, and Sergio Perez Menchetta. 
Well, is it any good? The critics, critics didn't like it. Critics only give it 2.6 out of 10, the meta score rating, which is all the critics. 2.6 out of 10. That's one of the lowest I think I've read for a long time. Chicago Tribune's Katie Walsh rated it 2.5 out of 10. She commented, Rambo lumbers to the finish line in the flaccid fifth instalment, which is a Frankenstein's monster of badly photocopied references to the previous movies, limply strung together with the laziest of screenplays. So she didn't like it. But the users, Job Public, Internet Movie Database user ratings are 6.2 out of 10, so just above a watchable rating. Obviously, that's uh, a little bit better. Uh, DR Painters on the 6th of January 2020 rated it 6 out of 10 and went on to say, the worst of the Rambo movies, decent enough and good ending, but could have been better. Didn't really do the Rambo accent voice, just talk like Stallone. Well, yeah, <laughs> worth watching if you've been seeing them all. Otherwise, a skippable action movie, better than Stallone's more recent escape plan sequels. Well, the less said about those escape plan sequels, the better. Uh, yeah, I understand the criticism. I, I personally, I quite like this. I mean, I just I just turned my brain to neutral and enjoyed the non-stop action because in an hour and 29 minutes, it does, there's no big slow build-up. It's quite, it's quite action all the way through. And as you, as you've, if you've ever seen my vlogs, I'm not a big action fan, but I did quite enjoy Rambo First Blood. And I, I wouldn't put anyone off going out and buying it, especially if you've got the collection and you want to add another one to it. I, I liked him and I give it a six and a half out of ten, which... If you know me, that's a pretty good score from me and old me. Anyway, that's Rambo, uh, Rambo Last Blood, which is uh, out now to buy. And the last film we're going to look at, a uh, British one, not doing having great reviews. It's Scarborough. It's called Scarborough, obviously, after the town in uh, Yorkshire. 15 rating. It's £10 on DVD. It's classed as a romantic drama, an hour and 27 minutes. And the storyline, at the Grand Hotel in Scarborough overlooking the North Sea, first Liz and then Aidan received the keys of their respective, respective rooms, declaring to be alone but finding themselves in the space of a trip in the elevator, each one clinging to a younger lover. Over the course of a weekend, two love stories intersect and merge, forbidden and marked, mirroring one another. Directed by Barnaby Southcombe, it was written by Fiona Evans, who wrote the play that this is based on and Barnaby Southcombe, who did the screenplay. Stars Jessica Barden, Jordan Bolger, and Edward Hogg. Is it any good? Well, the critics, hmm, a bit middling. They only give it a five out of ten, which isn't great. The Observer's Wendy Eid, or Eid, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, scored it six out of ten and commented, Southcombe deftly threads together the two stories with echoes in the dialogue and in the location. Well, that doesn't really tell us too much, does it? Internet movie database, user rating. So Joe Public, only give it a slightly better score, 5.5 out of 10. Uh, KS on the 13th of November 2019, he only rated it, I assume it's a he, maybe a she, KS, rated it 5 out of 10 and wrote, I believe most people followed the rules in the society. Makers want to cross the line deep down and do things forbidden. It may be the reason that it makes audience enjoy this film. I personally didn't get much mo much movement from the story or, or any feeling from the story, except enjoying the scenery of Scarborough, and that was it. So, obviously, I mean, I like I like Scarborough. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I have, I have watched the trailer for this, and it is some of the acting is a bit, bit dodgy to say the least but uh, if you have anything to do if you want to watch Scarborough I mean um, it's a tenor on DVD get it streamed you know a little bit cheaper uh, Scarborough's out to buy anywhere on DB, DVD at the moment and uh, please if you do watch it and you do enjoy it let us know in the comments one or two people did enjoy it but most people uh, didn't seem to enjoy it at all I must admit the acting has put me off a little bit and on to the box sets well, we've got one I covered here on a special. It'll be in the links below. Um, one called Cold Call, which was a 15. It was produced by Channel 5 and My 5. Uh, it's out on DVD, four episodes, 180 minutes. If you check the links below, I did a, a deeper review of this when it first came out. And it's a drama about a single mother who gets caught up in a cold call scam that turns her world upside down. It stars Taj Atwell, Samantha Power, and the wonderful Sally Lindsay. Is it any good? Well, the Internet Movie Database user rating was 6.4 out of 10, which is okay for a TV series. Julian Rosser on the 23rd of November 2019 rated it 6 out of 10 and stated, the ending was just a shambles, the acting very mediocre throughout. It could have been so much better with a bit more thought and a better choice of cast. I, w I wouldn't recommend it, I'm afraid. Well, I did a review for moviegamenostalgia.com 
and I'll just quote from my review. It's always nice to see Sally Lindsay back on our screens, and in the main, she does really well to carry this powerful, gritty miniseries drama. Ably assisted with okay acting talent, this simple but gritty drama does drag you in, although it does run out of steam just a little bit. At least it has an ending, which some dramas bottle out of these days. Four episodes seem just about right, and we see an ordinary person doing some extreme things to survive, but all seem plausible and not at all far fetched given the circumstances. So I give I give uh, Cold Call a rating a six point five out of ten, and I, and I did enjoy Cold Call. I thought it was okay. It's not the greatest drama, but it's okay, and that's now out to buy. And the next one that's out to buy is the Mallorca Files, which is a twelve rating, uh, nineteen pound on DVD. And it's a BBC, it's one of these BBC afternoon things. So it uh, says it all, like, um, you know, the, the BBC are quite clever at doing these little afternoon um, uh, crime dramas, etc. It's about a British and German detective clashing over how to police a Spanish island in Mallorca. Creator Dan Sefton stars Ellen Rees, Julian Lumen, Maria Fernandez Ake, or actually Ake, don't know how you pronounce that. Any good? Internet movie database user rating is 6.1 out of 10, so it's not done too bad. Each episode rates between 6.6 .6 and 7.5 out of 10. So, again, it's, it's, it's getting good ratings. Sleeping Dragon, one of the users who watched this on the 6th of December 2019, rated it 7 out of 10 and said, what a better way to sit down on a cold, grey December afternoon. The blue skies and easygoing plots represent 45 minutes of pure escapism. You'll be disappointed if you're expecting anything gritty or challenging. Challenging, It isn't. It fits perfectly into the afternoon category, joining Father Brown, Shakespeare and Hathaway. And whilst it doesn't quite reach the standard of the crime-fighting clergyman, it's still a decent watch. The two leads are very likeable, good fun. I thought they worked very well together. I'm glad to see a second series is planned for 2020. These afternoon dramas are easy to watch or catch up on. Yeah, I mean, as I said, they, they are what they are, these BBC little dramas. They are nice, and I did enjoy that Shakespeare and Hathaway, perhaps a little bit more than this. I've seen a couple of couple of episodes of this. Perhaps it'll grow on me a little bit more, but I did enjoy Shakespeare and Hathaway and obviously Father Brown a little bit more than I did this. And some people have been calling it a new moonlighting, which is a bit... Over the top, to say the least. But anyway, you, you let me know what you think. That's uh, obviously out to buy. That's the Mallorca Files. And the last one we're going to look at today, up to season seven, this one. And I have to admit to you, I've not seen any of these. I'm going to go back and watch it, though, because I've, I must have missed this along the line somewhere. And it's the Veep, a 15 rating. Season seven is £15 on DVD. And it consists of seven episodes, 28 minutes each. And it's a, basically a US political comedy. Former Vice President, and this series, Season 7 synopsis, former Vice President and one-time President Selena Mayer, multiple Emmy winner Julia Louis-Dreyfus, is back on the campaign trail for a second crack at the White House in the seventh and final season of the hit HBO comedy series as Selena woos uber-wealthy donors while navigating threats from primary challenges, including aide turned congressman Jonah Ryan, Timothy C. Sim Simons, her brand of misfits, minus the banished Mike, Matt Walsh, misbehaves as usual. Also starring Anna Klumsky, Tony Hale, Reed Scott, Kevin Dunn, Gary Cole, Sam Richardson, Sarah Sutherland and Clea Duval. Well, is that any good? Well, you've probably, if you've got to season seven, you've probably seen all seasons sit up to season six, haven't you? I mean, Internet Movie Database is giving it the whole, the whole seasons, one to seven and 8.3 out of 10 rated. And the episode ratings for season seven range from between 8.3 and 9.5 out of 10. So it's a really popular series. As I said, I, I've not actually watched it, but I have I have watched the trailers for it and find it quite funny. So that's why I'm going to go back and watch it at some stage. Blant Brun on the 5th of April last year rated it 8 out of 10 and wrote, of course, of the seven seasons from time to time on HBO, I watched some episodes of this crazy and very funny political gem that's well written with wits and humour, all while capturing pop, cult pop culture and the current political climate to its best nature. The scene catcher of the show, sorry, the scene catcher of the show is Juliet Louise Dreyfus, who, as Selena Mayer, has seen it all in life and the political world. Also, this series is a showcase of Selena's private life and work relationship with staff, as it always a fun as always it's a fun juggle with conflicts and drama. And I always thought Julie was one sexy lady. Her Selena character is also sexy, she says, as she's a sexy coloured bra wearing elegant female political power player who lights it up. 
Overall, funny, outspoken series. It's fun entertainment that doesn't take things too serious, yet its wit and well-written episodes are entertaining. Yeah, so if you're stuck with Veep, season seven is now out to buy. And I said I will be going and dipping into that and looking back, and I'll uh, obviously have to go back to season one, which was seven years ago. I was 2012, I think, season one ahead. So I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, I may have, I may have watched the odd one and forgot about it. I'm not too sure, but I'm, I'll dip back into that anyway. So that's that today. Three movies, It Chapter 2, Rambo, Last Blood, and Scarborough, and three TV series box sets, Cold Call, The Mallorca Files, and Veep Season 7. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave in your comments below. Any, if you enjoyed any of these, if you buy any of these and watch them, let me know what you think. And um, and as I said, I'll do it. Um, I won't probably try and do a bit of a little review on veep season seven if i get to it but obviously by the time i get to it, it might be too late so uh, but keep your ears keep keep your eyes open for little reviews anyway on here they'll all be pushed the bell notification i want to do my little box set and movie reviews anyway thank you very much for watching follow me on twitter at nostalgia underscore movie and i'm on facebook at bernard Denine with links to movie game nostalgia.com my website for the more rarer older DVDs, um, posters and board games. So please have a look, have a look on their movie game, nostalgia.com. Have a, have a plow through there, see what you think, spend a couple of minutes on there. Uh, if there's anything you're after for yourself or for someone else, just give us a shout. And if you haven't got it, I can try and point you in the right direction or get hold of it for you. All right, thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully I'll see you all again very, very soon. Whatever you're doing the rest of your day, have a great one. Look after yourself, look after your friends, and more importantly, look after your family. And this is Bernard saying goodbye. I'll see you all hopefully again very soon. Thanks for watching.